Sure. Good morning to you both. Um, Lisa, I'll, I'll start with you. The fact that we've seen, we've been talking about it all week, this push pull between earnings that are coming out and the bond market, as we've seen rates in particular just in the last couple of days, the 10 year yield moved to new multi year highs. How are you assessing the landscape right now? And do you think that rates are near a peak? Um, so, look, I'm, I'm not, you know, a pure rate strategist, but I know, you know, Morgan Stanley's Matt Hornback uh, does think that we're now at a place on the long end uh, where there's genuine value uh, emerging. And I think that when you think about the asymmetry of risk right now, you know, both stocks and bonds have had this horrendous year, both bear markets, both down more than 20%. The idea that you can get, you know, kind of coupons at four, four and a half percent now in the bond market with this asymmetric risk, meaning that if rates go down from here, uh, you know, you get four percent coupon plus capital appreciation. That looks to us at the minute like a much better bet uh, than stocks. And the reason I say that is to your point, um, we continue to be concerned. Uh, that earnings estimates have not really fully capitulated to this reality. It's wild. You know, the CEOs in conference board surveys and other surveys are talking about negative sentiment. They're talking about recession uh, in 2023 in those surveys, but they're not talking about it in explicit guidance in their, in their uh, earnings calls. And so numbers are not fully down. Uh, to where we think capitulation of, of the economic realities of slowing next year are going to be. So we're bond buyers here. That's where value is. And stocks still mm -hmm. need to see estimates come down. OK, I want to dig into that a little bit more. But first, Barry, to bring you in the conversation, your thought on the levels here for the S&P and how much seasonality, for example, might be factoring into the bounce we're seeing this week. Well, I think the, the biggest factors, the macro factors that matter the most for the market are will the Fed tighten beyond what's reflected in rate futures, which are about 4.65% in 2023. If they do, markets are going to go down. Uh, the second biggest factor is, is oil. It's really at the core of all inflation. All GDP is energy conversion. Uh, and if oil rockets higher, uh, the market's going to go down. Uh, and the third factor that we're watching is the diminishing liquidity in the Treasury market. The fact that the move index of bond volatility is way above the VIX index of stock volatility. So we're worried about that aspect as well, because if that gets uh, problematic, the stock market will go down. Uh, so we really need a Fed pause. Uh, now, not, uh, not so much that they would just outright disavow future rate hikes, but they would just simply say, um, every meeting is live, and if the data go our way, then after uh, first half 23, we don't have to do more. Uh, and then on the oil, uh, we need some resolution on what's going on with Ukraine and the Russian oil. Um, and then lastly, on liquidity, uh, the QT is something that we're watching, the quantitative tightening. Uh, but mm. overall, I'm optimistic that the worst is behind us and that we'll get about a six-month rally here within the market.